Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out this evening to worship and give praise to the Lord above. We will continue our midweek Lenten series of the Hands of the Passion. Tonight, we will focus on Caiaphas, the high priest, his hands of hypocrisy. Our worship service is printed out for you. You might also follow our worship screen. We begin with our opening hymn, Jesus, My Great High Priest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness. If we claim to be without sin. Father, I have sinned against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your child. Yet in mercy you sacrificed your only son to purge away my guilt. For his sake, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And in the joy of the Holy Spirit, let me serve you all my days. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Upon this, your confession, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. 
Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We read responsively Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord. But the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Blessed are all who take refuge in him, but those who oppose him will be destroyed. Let us pray. Lord God, you anointed your son to be king for the sake of your church. Help us as members of his kingdom to serve him faithfully and to come to the full knowledge of his grace and glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn our attention to our Passion reading, taken from the Gospel of Mark beginning at verse 66, chapter 14. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those, sitting, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate knowing it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Here ends our passion 
reading, we turn to our seasonal response. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. We sing our next hymn. Please stand for our gospel reading. Our gospel is taken from Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 55. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple, and in three days will build another not made by man. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. This is our gospel. Please be seated.
They're people of God. Every hero has enemies. And since Jesus is the greatest hero of all, of course, he had many enemies. Some of Jesus' enemies were obvious and some were not so obvious. When we think of Jesus' obvious enemies, we might think of Judas Iscariot, Jesus' hand-picked disciple who conspired with Jesus' enemies and betrayed the Lord for 30 paltry pieces of silver. Another obvious enemy might be Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, who really had the power and the authority to release Jesus, but gave in to the crowd. But what about Jesus' not so obvious enemies? Have you ever considered Simon Peter? Now, immediately, we don't think of Simon Peter as an enemy of Jesus, but isn't it true that there were times when Peter opposed the will of Jesus? At one time, Jesus even told Peter, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And even at the very end of Jesus' life, Peter denied knowing Jesus whatsoever. Jesus had obvious and not so obvious enemies. But when we look at these three individuals, whether it's Simon Peter or Pontius Pilate or Judas Iscariot, you'll notice that all three had an inner conflict. All three wrestled with doing what was right or not. You may remember from your Bible study how Judas Iscariot, when he found out that Jesus was arrested and would be crucified, he was filled with remorse. He ran back to the temple and threw the money into the temple. And even Pontius Pilate tried to release Jesus. He tried to find a way to let Jesus go free. He even washed his hands in front of the crowd to show them that he did not agree with their verdict of putting Jesus to death. And we all know that when the Lord looked at Peter after that rooster crowed, he broke down and wept bitterly. All three had inner struggles. But there doesn't seem to be any inner struggle whatsoever when we look at Caiaphas. Caiaphas, on the pages of Scripture, seems to be a cold, calculating mastermind who really was only concerned about keeping his position of power and authority. And he was not going to let anyone take that away from him, not even Jesus of Nazareth. Tonight we will take a look at Caiaphas, not to point a finger at him and shake our heads, not to consider ourselves better than Caiaphas, but by looking at Caiaphas, it forces us to take a closer look at ourselves. It forces us to examine our own hearts and lives to see if, like Caiaphas, we too might have hands of hypocrisy. Jesus was placed 
on trial before Caiaphas at a very unusual time. Technically, it was an illegal time. According to that Jewish law, no trial could be held after the sun had gone down. And yet here Jesus is standing in the court before Caiaphas and those religious leaders. Even so, false witnesses were brought into this courtroom to give their testimony against Jesus. But after they offered their testimony, it just did not seem to line up. Some false witnesses came in and said, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands and I'll build a temple not made with hands. Jesus never said that. He said something similar at the beginning of his ministry, but Jesus was talking about his body. Even then, however, their testimony did not agree. Caiaphas, who was sitting as judge of this mockery of a trial, was to be impartial and objective. And yet he must have thought to himself, to have something done right, you have to do it yourself, because he interjects. Don't you hear this testimony that they're bringing against you? Are you not going to answer? Mark tells us that Jesus remained silent. He gave no answer. Jesus knew that no matter what he said, there was no way to change their minds or hearts. They were hardened in their sin. No matter what Jesus told them, they were hell-bent on condemning him. And truthfully, the more truth that Jesus gave Caiaphas and those religious leaders, the more judgment and damnation would be heaped up upon them since they rejected Jesus as Lord. Caiaphas raised the stakes and he placed Jesus under oath and said, are you the son of the blessed one? Jesus could not remain silent here. He had to give his witness to the truth. He had to give his testimony. He had to make a good confession. So to this question, Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Jesus was letting Caiaphas and all those religious leaders know that a day would come when the tables would be turned. And they would have to stand before Jesus and he would sit as judge. But at that time, Caiaphas was the judge. And Caiaphas, as the high priest, he feigned righteous anger or righteous indignation. And after Jesus gave his testimony, he reached for the collar of his robes and he ripped them to show his contempt and disgust at Jesus' answer. As the high priest, Caiaphas was to be the protector of God's people. He was to be the caretaker, the one who watched over their souls. When in truth, Caiaphas did not care for the sheep at all. 
He simply cared about keeping his position of power and authority. There is a word for someone who claims to be something that he or she is not. And that word is hypocrite. Caiaphas hypocritically tore his robes. He screamed out that Jesus had blasphemed. When really Jesus gave witness to the truth. And Caiaphas was the one who was living in hypocrisy. We do not bring these things before us in order to consider ourselves better. Because isn't it true, like Caiaphas, we have hands of hypocrisy? We call ourselves the children of God. And yet how often do we break his commands over and over again? We claim to be followers of Jesus, but isn't it true that there are many times when we do not walk in Christ's footsteps? There is a word for someone who claims to be what he or she is not. That word is hypocrite. We too must admit that we have hands of hypocrisy, just like Caiaphas and those religious leaders. When Caiaphas ripped his robes, that was a green light for those religious leaders to take off their masks and to reveal themselves for who they truly were. Those religious leaders were often straight-laced, well-behaved, at least to the naked eye. But after Caiaphas ripped his robes, they acted no better than animals. And Mark tells us, then they spat at him. They blindfolded him. They beat him with their fists. Not the actions of well-behaved, intelligent religious leaders. We, like those religious leaders, have hands of hypocrisy. What separates you and me from Caiaphas and those religious leaders? In one word, faith. Faith in Jesus as our savior from sin. Those religious leaders in Caiaphas, they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. They did not trust in him as their redeemer. By God's power, by the power of his Holy Spirit, we have faith to believe Jesus as our savior, as our redeemer, as the one who saves us. We must admit that we too have been hypocritical. And yet that's why Jesus came. He did not come into the world for perfect people. He came for hypocrites. He came for backsliders. He came for liars and deceivers. Jesus came for you. He endured the punishment that we deserve. He took that upon himself so that our sins might be washed away. 
our hands may be filled with hypocrisy, but by God's power and grace, they are washed clean in the blood of Christ. When Jesus died on that cross, when he shed his blood, it was to take away the sins of the world, as John the Baptist put it. The perfect Lamb of God sacrificed himself for us. Thanks be to God, the story does not end on the cross or even in the tomb. Jesus tells us, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he returns, he will take us to be where he is. That's his promise to you, to me, and to all who believe. So as you consider the hands of the passion, we readily admit, like Caiaphas, we too have hands of hypocrisy. But we give thanks to the Lord who has washed our hands clean and who allows us to stand before him in righteousness and purity forever. Amen. We continue with our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All praise to you, our God, this night, for all the blessings of the light. Keep us, yes, keep us, King of Kings, beneath your own almighty wings. Forgive us, Lord, through your dear Son, for sins that we this day have done, that as we sleep, peace we would hold with all, with you, within our souls. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
Good evening again. It's always a pleasure and a treat to be back at St. James. For many of you old timers, you know that I once vicared here many moons ago underneath Pastor Kosalki, who's now up north living his best life. So hopefully we'll continue to uh, be able to meet together, at least during the Lenten season. It's always a pleasure. May the Lord be with you as you continue to do his will and proclaim the truth of Jesus so that more and more people might be saved.